Here we go, another morning, running late again as ever, uh, and it's raining. Brilliant. And relax, uh, that's them sorted for the morning. Uh, I'm gonna head over to the gym now, and then, um, the rest of today is all about sorting out ready for um, the weekend. We've got to um, we've got to travel from here on the south coast up to Manchester. I'll talk a lot more about that in the um, in the next video, uh, and you can sort of see how we get on. I always think it's interesting because the charging network's there to do it, uh, but you never really know what's going to happen en route. Uh, I've always had really positive experiences of, um, uh, sort of long journeys in this car but you're always one charge station, you're always one service station away from it, all going horribly wrong. Talking of the charging networks, that's kind of my, my topic of conversation for today, really. And it's come about because uh, with another power company announcing that they're going to uh, join in and um, roll out uh, a charging infrastructure of thousands and thousands of chargers, uh, which is brilliant news. But it's got me kind of rethinking my standpoint, if you like, on who should be responsible for chargers uh, to enable the electric cars that are being produced to be able to get about. Uh, should it be the manufacturers or should it be uh, utility companies, people that deal with electricity? So short term, which is where we are at the moment, it kind of almost has by default had to fall to the manufacturers. Now love them or hate them, Tesla have absolutely done the right thing. Um, without Tesla, I think I can categorically say we wouldn't be where we are today with um, EVs. Not only have they produced a car that is effectively proof of concept, they've also brought along with it a full charging infrastructure that certainly for me here in the UK, I can not only travel across the UK on it, but also across Europe. We've seen other companies, um, Nissan, Renault, uh, Mitsubishi coming together. They're talking about uh, a charging infrastructure uh, to assist with their EVs. Uh, we've just heard this week about um, another company that involves uh, BMW, Daimler, Volkswagen. There, I think, I think within the next couple of years, they're gonna roll 400 uh, fast charging stations out across Europe. So short term, whether it's right or wrong, uh, manufacturers of uh, electric vehicles absolutely have to roll out some sort of charging infrastructure because it's the old chicken and egg. Uh, without the charging infrastructure, people won't buy their cars. Uh, if people don't buy the cars, other people will not install charging infrastructures because there's no profit to be made in it. So, as I said, short term, we're seeing manufacturers, uh, some an awful lot better than others, putting the investment into charging infrastructure for their EVs. What I want to look at is beyond the short term. When there's sufficient EVs on the road that a, um, a good reliable charging infrastructure can turn a profit. Uh, and when we hit that point, who are the right people to run that? And should we be putting pressure on uh, manufacturers of vehicles to supply that? But I'm not far off the gym at the moment, so um, I'm going to go and have a workout. Uh, and when I finish, I'll grab a coffee and I'm going to talk you through my thoughts and ideas about it. Well, that didn't take long for the morning to slip by. I've, um, I've been to the gym, I've been into town, and now I'm, now I'm heading back home again. So um, I want to pick up where I left off. I was talking about the kind of the short term as I saw it. And now I want to talk about kind of um, short into medium term. I spoke before about um, the likes of uh, BMW, uh, Mercedes, Volkswagen, them coming together to, um, to roll out a charging system. I think they're calling it Ionity. Uh, I think we're going to see a little bit more of that in the sort of short to medium term. I think we're going to see car manufacturers uh, rolling out their own networks. Uh, and really that I see as um, limited. They're not doing these things in their tens if not hundreds of thousands of um, charge points uh, it's quite small in number um, and the way I see it this is um, 
Uh, it's a it's a way of being able to say to customers, come and buy an EV that we sell and um, look at the support we're giving you and hopefully people will buy EVs on the back of it. Heading on into the medium term, we start looking, certainly in this country, at the um, uh, petrol stations. Where obviously the government have um, put a bill through here in the UK saying that all petrol stations on main routes uh, have to have charge points within them. And, um, Shell have jumped to it and they've already started installing charge points. It's um, going to be quite expensive but I think as we go into the long term that will become less and less of an issue because we'll all be driving EVs which m with much much longer ranges so um, actually most of our charging will be done at home and it's only when we go on those longer journeys that we're going to be forced to uh, pay for our, our electricity in these service stations and I guess it's like going to a motorway service station. We know we're going to pay over the odds for the fuel there but you don't have a lot of choice, um, needs must. So yeah, so that's heading into medium term. Um, I think there's a real interesting crossover. There's gonna be the manufacturers who are rolling out their charge points. We've also already got the likes of Ecotricity who have got uh, 50 kilowatt hour charge points in all the service stations around the UK. Uh, we've got um, the likes of Polar who have got uh, charge stations in lots of different locations, car parks, streets, um, destinations such as restaurants uh, and they have started going into partnership with the likes of um, Ovo who are uh, an electricity supply company here in the UK. We've heard this week that E.ON are going to launch their own charging network. Now I think they already have some charges in, in Europe, I think um, Denmark in particular, but they are going to launch thousands of charge points and I think this rolls us nicely into the long term. When it comes to um, us filling our ice cars with, with fuel, we go to a petrol station. I don't go uh, to Mazda and expect them to provide fuel for my car. It's a separate service. It's a service that you can make profit from. So it, for me it follows suit that if it's a service you can make profit from then the companies that supply that service, i.e. electricity companies, they're the ones that are best placed to make the profit from us uh, and to know what the infrastructure should look like. Why do we think that a car manufacturer would be better placed to do that than an electricity company? And this is my view uh, that going forward we'll see less and less of these um, kind of attempts to look like they're doing the right thing from car manufacturers uh, and we'll see more and more electricity companies uh, fighting for prime locations with which to install their chargers and provide their electricity. Now it'll be done in I think one or two ways. There'll be partnerships between the likes of Ovo and um, Polar. So the electricity will be supplied uh, with some incentives to go and join Ovo in that you get subscription to the Polar network. There will also, I think, the um, I'm guessing Eon will ultimately provide banks of chargers that you can access probably with your credit card uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's some incentives if you also have their home electricity. We're already seeing the, the likes of Ecotricity will need to start upgrading their network because the majority of their chargers are maxing out at 50 kilowatts. Well we're now going to start seeing cars that will go way beyond that. We're seeing cars uh, in the pipeline of 300 plus kilowatts they can charge at. So uh, Eon, certainly their chargers, um, I think it's just a firmware update, they will be able to, to provide that. I think Polar have started installing some that will be able to do that. So I think you know, the future is, I wonder how Ecotricity will respond to that because again, they have been a, a, an incredible service to get people driving EVs. So people like me probably wouldn't have bought uh, a Nissan Leaf if it wasn't for the likes of Ecotricity providing the service they do. The other issue I see with uh, the car manufacturers coming together and um, providing charging is that they're gonna provide charging for their cars. So this Ionity charging infrastructure that's going in, it's CCS. Well, that's no good to me, even if I get to one, uh, I need a Chadamo. So, Surely, again, we are better off as consumers um, expecting the infrastructure to be provided by uh, a utility company or somebody that has no alliance to any one individual manufacturer and will offer a service that no matter what electric car you drive, 
they've got a plug that you can plug in at their machine uh, and that for me is the crux of why I think uh, electricity companies are best placed to provide uh, a service that they know inside out that they have no allegiance to any manufacturer uh, and that they will be looking to maximize their profit by providing the best service for everyone who drives an EV. Um, thanks ever so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's vlog. If you have, remember to uh, like and share. And if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you again next time. Take care.